Chair, I now call to order the March 11, 2024 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Policy Review Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Teams Live on the BCPS website. To conduct this meeting by virtual means, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Wash, Ms. Gover, or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that, that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Gover, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Frempo? Present. Ms. Harvey? Present. Dr. Savoy? Ms. Dulusky? Present. Ms. Pumphrey? Present. Ms. Pumphrey, Thank you, Ms. we Gover. have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Gover. Um, please call the roll to determine which staff members are present in this meeting. Dr. Grimm? Present. Mr. Hartlove? Present. Mr. Dixit? Present. Mr. Conley? Present. Ms. Becker? Present. Ms. Webster? Present. Ms. Howie? Here. Ms. Wash? Here. Thank you. Are there any additional staff members in the meeting that I have not identified? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gover. The first item on our agenda is item B1, policy 3130, products and services for purchase. And for that, I call on Ms. Weber, Ms. excuse me, was Ms. Webster. Ms. Webster, please proceed. Certainly, thank you and good afternoon. Um, this particular policy is for products and services that are purchased by students. It um mimics some of our other purchasing uh, policies we have updated language throughout the policy to ensure that it conforms to certain uh, current practices and we also looked at the request to add quality um, products into this specific um, language and wanted to bring to the attention of the committee that um, specifications are defined are all of the quality is defined by the specifications in each solicitation and we also um, stay on top of our vendors and their performance with our annual vendor performance evaluations. Thank you, Ms. Webster. Certainly. Is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 3130? This is board member Frimpong. I just had a question. Sure, go ahead, Ms. Frimpong. Thank you. Um, in the here we go. In the analysis, it references the education article 5-112 so that um, there's a better understanding of um, what I guess the best value means. Um, and but within the policy, I didn't see like a reference to that particular um, article just so that people have a better understanding of what are those qualifications. So would that be something typically included in the policy as a reference somewhere or related? Typically, we uh, reference. Um, I'm trying to look for it. Typically, we do reference different state law on certain policies. Um, I'm seeing it in the. No, I'm, I take that back. I'm not seeing that in the rule. I would ask that the law office provide some guidance, but I believe I've seen different. Um, code added for reference. So Ms. Frempong, if I remember the discussion when this was being revised initially, 
Um, one of the questions that staff had was about quality and how that was defined and how that, how that was determined. 5112 of the education article is the bid statute. And that bid statute does refer to quality as a concept. However, 5112 is not required for this particular, these particular types of contracts. So we were, as I recall, again, the discussion, um, it was about including 5112 in the policy analysis so that the concept of quality uh, could be at least expressed here. Uh, but it's but the the statute itself, which is the bid statute and has the bid requirements and has the requirements for lowest responsible bidder, is not and is not mandated uh, and does not mandate what is in this particular policy. If that makes sense, ma'am. I'm gonna take your word, Miss Howie. I don't know. That. <laughs> I, I don't know that I'm fully following. I, I, I think I am, but. If you're saying it's not needed, I will I will defer to you. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? OK, seeing seeing none, if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 3130 is moved forward for first reader as presented. And um, the next item on our agenda is item B2, policy 3200 purchases from minority and small businesses. And um, for that, I also call on Ms. Webster. Ms. Webster, please proceed. Certainly. <clears throat> Again, the edits and changes to this policy are simply an update to current, um, to the current direction from the um, public school construction program and our current practices. OK, um, is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 3200? OK, if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 3200 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Uh, next on our agenda is item B3, policy 3209 purchasing principles. Um, Ms. Webster, please proceed. Certainly. Again, the, the edits are directed to clarify and align with current practices. Um, there are limited edits to um, this specific policy. Thank you, Ms. Webster. Mm -hmm. any, any discussion on recommended changes to policy 3209? OK, um, if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 3209 is moved forward for first reader as presented. And next is policy 3225, furniture, fixtures and equipment. And again, Ms. Webster, you may proceed. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> um, and again, we are bringing this into alignment with current practices. This is a process that we have fine tuned over the last several years working with Mr. Dixit's team. And um, we're just bringing this into alignment. OK. Any discussion on recommended changes to policy 3225? There are no corrections and no objection. Policy 3225 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you, Ms. Webster. Certainly. Um, Madam Chair, I'm sorry, sorry yes. Madam Chair. Uh, may Ms. Webster and Mr. Hartlow be excused? I think they're already gone. Uh, I'm still I'm here. Oh, OK. <laughs> they also froze for a second, so I think I might have missed what you said, but I'm assuming you asked if Ms. Webster can and Mr. Hartlove as well. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, next on our agenda is item B5, policy 3640, disposal of surplus, surplus or excess property. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixit. Good evening. Uh, policy 3640, 
uh, has minor changes. It's been revised to comply with the policy review committee's editing conventions, uh, clarify the procedure for disposal of textbooks and other materials of instruction, update the name of the Division of Fiscal Service, and correct the title of policy 41, and insert a hyperlink to Superintendent's Rule 3640 in board docs to respond to the Public Works Recommendation 8-30. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 3640? Okay, see none if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 3640 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, the next item on our agenda is item C1, policy 3170, framework for continuous improvement. Policy 3170 was recommitted to the PRC by the board on January 23rd, 2024 for discussion and refinement of the policy considering the board's comments. It was presented to the committee on February 5th, 2024 to give staff the committee's input. Policy 3170 has been revised by staff and is before the committee for review. Mr. Connolly, please proceed. Yes, thank you very much and good afternoon. Just wanted to share that as part of policy 3170, which is our continuous improvement policy, we have some uh, staff changes pursuant to the February 5th uh, policy review committee meeting, and those were shown in blue in the policy analysis. The policy 3170 enables the board and school system to evaluate <coughs> and use data to inform decision making across BCPS collect and report data to government agencies as required by federal and state law and monitor progress towards system goals and priorities as aligned with comar 13a010604 entitled requirements educational equity in maryland this requirement drives the work toward continuous improvement through data analysis and the use of disaggregated data specifically sections 3 and 11 which state section 3 direct the identification and utilization of resources to provide equitable access to educational opportunities and services by among other steps, the use of disaggregated student data to analyze trends and identify gaps and equitable solutions. And section 11, identify the school system's process for analyzing data to develop goals, objectives, strategies, and timelines for the implementation of equitable and culturally competent practices in each school. The policy has been updated based on the information shared in blue, as well as the legal reference for Comar 13A010604, again entitled Requirements, Educational Equity in Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. I appreciate those details being added. I think it clarifies um, what we were looking for here as a board or as a committee. Um, and is there are there any other discussion or questions regarding the changes to 3170? OK. Seeing none. Um, if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 3170 is moved forward for first reader as presented. And Madam Chair, may uh, Mr. Conley be excused? Yes, thank you, Mr. Conley. Thank you thank for your you. input. Have a uh, wonderful afternoon. You too. Thank you. OK, um, next on our agenda is item D, board request for discussion, policy 1300 use of facilities. Policy 1300 was added to the agenda at my request for the committee's discussion of the removal of the language first come first serve because of recent board member concerns regarding changes to policy 1300 and parking lot usage. Paragraph 3D currently reads BCPS will consider whether to make school facilities available for community purposes upon written application and subject to the restrictions in this policy. The availability of parking lots is on a first come first serve basis. This language was added by the policy review committee at its November 14, 2022 meeting and subse subsequently approved by the board. Staff has included the policy analysis from those meetings to help us understand the committee's request at that time. Um, is there any discussion on policy 1300? Um, and so I, sorry. Madam Chair, just so you know, um, Mr. Dixit, Dr. Grimm, Ms. Becker are all here. Uh, they bear the burden uh, 
and I use that word deliberately, of um, managing uh, pa policy 1300 and rule 1300. So uh, I thought that if the committee had questions about how um, the, uh, the policy operates, they would be best able to answer those questions. Uh, they also uh, provided a deep analysis in November of the, the possible impact of the change to policy 1300. And they are here if you have any questions. Thank you so much. And I thank you, I thank you all for um, adding this on such short notice and being here to answer questions. Um, my, uh, my concerns that have been brought up through the community are that um, the, the parking lot, there is no longer a reservation system for the parking lots. Um, it's more first come first serve basis. I after reading through the information that you provided, I am a little bit confused, so I do have some questions. I'm not sure it would be appropriate to answer those questions. Um, so it's it, it says the way I'm reading is this is prior to the 2022 changes. Um, parking lots were not in that in the policy. At all, as far as reservations, is that correct or were they able to be re reserved? That is that is correct, Ms. Pumphrey. They were not specifically mentioned in the policy, and therefore they were part of the use of facilities request. Okay, so um, if if organizations were to, prior to 2022, if organizations were to request use of a parking lot for something like a community event, um, how would that have happened prior to this 2022 change? So uh, there was a youth, there's a use of facilities form that we have that is filled out either at the school level or it's filled out by the community member. It is um, it goes through a, a routing procedure where it's first seen and approved at the school level and then it moves on to uh, the Department of uh, Facilities. Facilities then reviews that part of the application. In the past, parking lots were were on that form. Um, OK, so they were on the form. Mr. Dixon, is there anything you want to add to that? No, you are absolutely right. And only clarification is that parking lot as a whole could be reserved, but number of spots on the parking lot could not be reserved because we didn't have the enforcement capability. So by adding the language of first come first serve, we cannot even reserve the entire parking lot if somebody wants to use that for their organization. OK, and thank you for that comment, because I think that clarifies um, the question I was trying to figure out here, because it looked to me like we added parking lots as part of the usage. Um, so if we added it and it wasn't there before, I, my question was, how were the parking lots being reserved? Because I know they were being reserved prior to 2022, correct? Yes, parking lots could be reserved for a specific function, but spaces within the parking lot could not be reserved. So I just wanted to clarify that. OK. Um, let me just make sure I have all my questions here before I proceed. OK, so in the analysis, um, there was also mention of or concern was expressed about um, if that was added, adding to staff's um, work to be able to process those requests. Um, but if parking lots were reserved in the past, I'm not sure how that is just the specific parking lot spots themselves. Is that where the added work was being would be um, for staff? So by adding the language about first come first service, it uh, limited our ability to reserve the entire parking lot because that's not in the request form anymore. So if you are applying for uh, an event on the parking lot, we don't have that capability. OK, but adding parking lots in quotes, adding parking lots itself to the definition was not adding that work, just the first come first serve portion. That's right. That's correct. And Ms. Pumphrey, just to clarify, I think one of the other one of the other caveats to this was, um, as Mr. Dixon said, we we don't in, we don't enforce the use of a, of a parking lot, so we don't have staff. Um, let's say a community event had a reserved a parking lot for a particular event. We do not have staff that that shows up to make sure that there is some enforcement of the of the parking lot. So typically when we have an event where we grant use facilities use of a parking lot 
any enforcement of that would be um, would be through the the county government through whatever permitting process they have or through the police department. OK, so one more question. Would it be correct to say um, if we remove the language, only the language for first come first serve basis, would that put any added burden on staff members in processing these requests? Not to my knowledge, I have Miss Becker, who is the director in charge of that. Miss Becker, would you like to respond to that question also? Yeah, that would not to take that language out. It, it would not be a burden on staff. Okay. Um, and at this point, before I proceed, um, are there any other questions or discussion from other committee members? Ms. Stileski, I see your hand up. I don't I can't see everyone, but I see Ms. Stileski's hand up. Thank you. Um, just nope. one question about first come first serve. Um, you know, it's not like for lack of a better word, black and white. So is there anywhere that we think this might need to be defined so that if there's a dispute, it's sort of um, standardized? as to what it means and to be able to support that whoever was granted access um, was truly first. So Ms. Stileski, from, from our, our point of view, as I said earlier, we, we, we are not in the, the business of park of enforcement of, of this. Right. So from uh, past practice, Again, we would we would grant the ability for uh, the reservation, as Mr. Dixon said, of the of the parking lot itself, of the parking lot of in the, within the facility. The challenge that we've heard, um, you know, as BCPS staff under with the current policy, the way that it's written, is that we have a number of community groups that have asked us through the facilities use process to reserve the parking lot. Um, we are unable to to do that or to assist them in that because the the policy clearly states it's first come first serve. Because right. it's first come first serve, they have challenges in getting permitting through Baltimore County government for their event. So um, we're we're unable to assist or, or facilitate that particular request. So from a staff point of view, um, it does not assist us in our work to specifically name the the parking lot in the policy um, for for the for the means of trying to assist um, the public with facilitating their requests. So, um, Ms. Lasky, this may help also. Um, I and Ms. Hal, you'll let me know if I'm proceeding on this properly. I would like to propose. I would like to invite a motion to remove the language "first come, first serve" from um, paragraph three D. Is that is this the appropriate place to do that, Ms. Howie? You are able to do that because policy 1300 is on the agenda as um, not as a discuss, not as a um, uh, committee general good and welfare. So the, the public would expect that there could be some action on 1300. OK, so if I um, make that motion and it's second for the discussion, if necessary, correct? Correct. This is board sorry, member I, Fung, I second the, sorry, the motion. Sorry, I for, oh. Okay, thank you, Ms. Frempong. Um, and now any discussion on the um, proposed amendment, motion to amend? And I would just say my reasoning for this is uh, uh, exactly what Dr. Grimm described, is that um, I, we are having organizations that in, historically have reserved our parking lots for events such as community events, such as community events, um, things like um, uh, national night out and and other community events and they are now um, being told that they can't reserve the lot um, because it's it's first come first serve on a first come first serve basis means there's no reservation of the space and the problem with that is they're not able to secure permits um, without knowing that that space is secured because technically somebody could come up the night before or that day the morning of and use the parking lot because they were there first so i think by removing that first come first serve language it allows um, organizations and, and the community to reserve our parking lots for usage such as community events. So Madam Chair, just want to make sure I know which sentence you want to take out. 
So is it the sentence, the availability of parking lots is on a first come first serve basis? Is that the sentence you want deleted? Yes, ma'am. Okay, understood. Ms. Sosky, do you have your hand up? I'm sorry, I'm having a difficult time seeing you. Yes, thank you. Okay. I just, I just want to make sure I'm clarifying and understanding correctly. So if we remove the first come first serve, that would enable organizations such as National Night Out to be able to secure the parking lot so that if another group came and tried to use the parking lot, it would already be designated for, for say, National Night Out or whichever organization um, had arrangements to use it. Just want to make sure I'm understanding correctly. So I, I'm not, and I would. I see Ms. Becker is unmuted. I don't. I don't think we have parking police at the schools, so I don't know if there is an affirmative way uh, once the um, the parking is reserved to make sure that there that the parking lot is available for use. Am I accurate in that, um, colleagues? Yes, you are. It's it's similar to any other space on the grounds, like the uh, ball fields. It would be reserved, but again, we don't police it, but it will be on the calendar. So if another organization tries to reserve the parking lot the same day as another organization, they have a it, they will typically be denied if there's already an approval on the parking lot. And I would just I would just add to what Ms. Becker said. Um, that's 100% accurate. If it is a permitted event by Baltimore County government, then they have their own process for enforcing permits. Um, and who holds and who holds the permit? So if that answers your question, Ms. Stolusky, if it's not a permitted event, as Ms. Becker said, it would be you know this this group reserved the space versus this other versus this other group did not right and then just without police enforcement that is that is correct miss howie okay. was 100 yeah. percent correct we do not we do not have staff that enforces that right that's great thank you very much and i'm just going to ask another question that i think it was i know it was already answered but i just want to clarify um would this take it back to the way the parking lots were reserved prior to the 2022 changes i ultimately what it what it would allow us to do miss pumphrey is to put the parking lots back in the reservation system as an option they were okay. they were removed uh as an option when the new policy took effect okay and and no additional work on staff I'm just reiterating. I apologize for being repetitive. <laughs> I'm going to ask Ms. Becker to answer that one again. OK, it, it's fairly simple to add the spaces back onto the, the different schools. It's all uh, our new technology, so it, it's pretty simple. OK, thank you. Any other questions or comments from board members? I mean, excuse me, committee members. OK, so we are now going to vote on a motion to amend. Policy 1300 to remove the sentence. The availability of parking lots is on a first come first serve basis under paragraph 3D. So moved, Stolesky. I think we moved in second and so now we're going to vote on the correct. Correct. We're going to vote on the amend. We're that is vote correct. On the to, vote on the motion to amend. Um, so can I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Rampong? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Ms. Harvey? I'll come yes, back. Yes, I apologize. Oh, thank you. Ms. Stolesky? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Favor is four. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you very much. And, and now Madam, we are. Yes. Madam Chair, may Dr. Grimm, Mr. Dixit, and Ms. Becker be excused. Yes, and thank you so much for answering all my questions. I have a good evening.
apologize. I think I froze again. I think you heard that though. I said thank you for um, thank you for your answering all my questions. OK, so now we're moving on to item E committee general good and well welfare. The floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. Members of the committee, I would like to discuss our purpose and what we wish to establish as measures of effectiveness. How do we as a committee determine whether we have accomplished our stated goal? The, the board handbook states that the policy review committee is responsible for reviewing new and revised board policies as recommended by staff. Unless legal or regulatory requirements demand otherwise, the board shall, to the best of its abilities, review its policies within seven years of adoption, revision, or readoption. Policies approved by this committee will, in the normal course, be pre presented to the board for adoption following a series of public presentations. I must emphasize that this is a discussion of our role. We are not taking any votes or any action at this time. So at this time, we'll discuss our, our committee roles um, to determine how, if we want to um, make any changes to what's stated in the handbook um, and just general discussion about that. Um, do, do any committee members have any comments? This is board member from Palm. Yes, Ms. from Palm. Is this as a result of um, our last meeting regarding um, the board handbook and the, the different committees? Yes, ma'am. OK, I guess so I thought um, as we were moving forward this, are we going into administrative function to discuss these items? No, we have determined that that's not appropriate for um, closed session. I mean, for administrative function. So we are required to discuss this in open meeting format, which is why we're doing this now. OK, I'm following. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other any comments? Um, I mean, this this for for policy review committee, as I stated in the in earlier, the um, policies are reviewed on this every seven years for, for the most part, unless it's you know regulated otherwise. Um, and those policies, the superintendent informs the board of which policies are coming up for review. So typically that's where we get our, you know, our calendar with Ms. Howie's work and staff, her, you know, staff's work to review the policies. And then we also have carryovers from the prior year if that seven year goal has not been met. So that is our role as a as PRC at this point, as it is also stated in the handbook. I'm not sure if anybody has any any suggestions as far as if that needs to be changed, if different wording needs to be added. Um, I think it's pretty clear just because it's established by um, superintendent rule and that's how we determine which policies are going to re be reviewed unless a board member of course brings up another such as what happened tonight with 1300, another recommendation for policies that need to be brought up for specific reasons. This is board member from Pong. Yes, Ms. Pong. So and in, in, I guess in alignment with what you were saying about other board members bringing up things, I think we've also seen um, as a result of, um, for example, if something is happening, I believe it was like policy 1280, um, but relating to school boundaries. So when we also are seeing um, maybe some things happening that would necess necessitate that we need to take a look at the um, policy, that's also, I guess, another way um, that these policies come, but I guess that still is, is done underneath the board member bringing that to the committee. Correct, and I think oftentimes I know um, I do and I'm sure Ms. Howie and Seth also listen to community input sometimes and if something comes up that's, you know, a hot topic that we think needs to be pulled, you know, pulled into discussion, um, we talk about that and note that as well on our agenda. Thank you. You said it better than I was saying. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions about that portion or discussion comments? So another thing that we can also discuss here is the policy's effectiveness. Um, and a suggestion from Ms. Howe, we all will definitely give her credit for this, is that we um, could compare a measure of our effect effectiveness could be the number of carryovers from prior years. So um, that means we haven't gotten through the policies that we're supposed to review for the year. So if we look at those carryovers, for example, a comparison from 2022, 2023 to 2023, 20, 2024, that could be a way of measuring our effectiveness as a committee. Any comments regarding measuring our effectiveness? I think that's a great idea. This is Mrs. Stolesky. 
credit to Ms. Howie for that. <laughs> this is a uh, board member from Pung again. So in general, I guess how uh, do we have uh, a certain quantity that we expect from year to year that we should be reviewing? So, uh, excuse me, um, Ms. Frempong, or uh, Ms. Uh, Pumphrey, I can answer that question. Thank if you. If you like. Sure, uh, thank so, you. the short answer, uh, Ms. Frempong, is no. Uh, it depends on that seven year cycle, and some years are heavier than others. Uh, but you do not have a set number. We were not able, when we started the seven year cycle, to divide the, the policy uh, manual into sevenths. Uh, so it's the best we uh, it's the best way we figured out uh, to make sure there was a continuous cycle. Uh, what we found when the policies were placed online, because there was uh, a time quite a long time, actually, that none of the policies were digitized. You had to go to either an office or to um, a school to be able to review the policies. When we digitized all of the policies back in the early 2000s, uh, we found that uh, many policies had not been reviewed since 1968, um, which was kind of the, the seminal year for board member or for the board, this board to adopt policies. And they just were not, there was no consistent way to review them. So that's actually initially it was five years. Um, and then uh, it was five years under Dr. Hairston, and then it was changed to seven years. Uh, so uh, again, we did not divide it into sevenths. We just started reviewing policies and put them in the hopper, as it were, to make sure that they there was a continuous way of reviewing them. Uh, and then we didn't have ancient policies uh, that were on the books. And at that point, they were there for the world to see that we had not reviewed uh, and that the board um, had not looked at some of these issues for decades. That is not happening now. So it sounds like we are in a pretty good rhythm, even though the numbers of policies may vary from year to year. It is a manageable number um, from year to year so that we do have the expectation that we can get through the work um, for that particular school year? Yes, we do. Okay. And uh, Ms. Wash is, is very careful about how the year is planned out, uh, making sure that staff has sufficient time so that staff is not surprised, so that if there is additional study that has to be done, that is done. So we do plan out the year. We once 8130, rule 8130 has been complied with and you as the committee and then the board has voted or has seen that um, that report, then we as staff start working immediately on spacing it out over the year. Got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to reiterate staff here, staff's role here in general and, and, and in my opinion is extremely important because when we're reviewing these policies oftentimes and 1300 tonight is a great example we don't know how it how it's um, how the implementation is is affecting our processes throughout the system and I so hearing staff's comments about how it's actually working in practice for me is very important and very helpful um, when we when we have these um, discussions in committee. Any other comments from board members? I th if think I sort of um, so what I'm hearing here is our role as defined in the handbook is it sounds pretty um, like wait, I, I'm feeling that we can keep it that way as far as our report back to the board um, and our um, as recommended by Ms. Howie our measure of effectiveness. I think we have a handle on that. If everybody is in agreement, um, I think I know how to proceed as far as writing that out for the board to see as a whole. Ms. Harvey, you have a question. Uh, yeah, just in terms of effectiveness, um, I think there's a difference between efficiency, which is did we kind of meet our goals of reviewing all the policies that we wanted to review, and maybe effectiveness, which to me might be 
along the lines of looking at how many policies do we have to bring back for review prior to the seven-year period. We've had a, a few this year, um, this cycle, which is neither, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing, but um, I think, you know, if there's some considerations that we missed or something like that, it may be borne out in, in that particular piece of data. So maybe looking at how many have to come back to us prior to their seven-year cycle would be another measure of effectiveness. Okay. And so, I agree with that. Go ahead, Ms. Yowie. So I wonder if um, bringing a policy back, again, looking at that, that, that data point, perhaps you want to expand it? Because let's say that a statute or regulation has changed uh, and your own um, policy uh, and your own handbook indicates that uh, that's a reason for bringing something back um, inside of that seven year period. So that has nothing to do with whether or not something was um, ha had an impact that was not uh, foreseen, but there are reasons that are beyond the board's um, uh, ability to control that could also be the reason for bring having to bring a policy back. Oh, I appreciate that nuance. You're absolutely correct. Thank you. That was actually going to be my comment also. So you said exactly what I was thinking, Ms. Howie. Sometimes there's a reason for it to come back that maybe you come back sooner prior than the seven years. Um, that's not, you know, any anything the board can control or the committee can control. So thank you for that. Any other comments or discussion? OK, thank you. I think we are ready to move forward with that and I'll just um, make sure I pull all our thoughts together and to be able to present that to the board. OK. Um, and any other comments from committee members as far as under the committee general good and welfare portion of our meeting? OK, the next meeting of the policy review committee is scheduled for Monday, May 13th. We have no April meeting. I'm at 4.30 p.m. And because there is no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, committee members. Good night.